I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and here today with me is Tom Calandra of the Calandra Report. Thank you so much for joining me. Great to see you. Well, it's been about, what, six, seven months, Charlotte. Well, and I don't know how long it's been since we actually saw each other in person, quite a bit longer than that. Yeah. And, you know, of course, your hair hasn't turned gray because it shouldn't, but mine is starting to with this market. And, uh, and I joked today uh, to the audience here in New Orleans that... Uh, I'm wearing black because I'm in the morning for most people's portfolios. I know. So. I saw I saw oh. your panel yesterday. I was going to bring that up as my first point, oh, really. I see you're wearing black again today. So, yeah, tell me about how, how you're weathering the storm. Well, let's face it. You know, the one thing we talked about uh, just before this uh, ca the camera went on was uh, if anyone, today's a great example, we're down a zillion points, we're up a zillion points, the inflation number is this, yeah. The PPI is that. German inflation is up 10%. Well, if anyone out there tells you they know why markets are, are doing what they're doing right now, and not just stock markets, uh, uh, bond markets, yields, currencies, they, they're probably full of beeswax. But if there's somebody that's making sense of it all, please, you know, email me because I, I'd be, you know, willing to pay for your advice. Uh, <laughs> You know, you know me, I, uh, I know this sounds like a joke, but you know, I hold my losers. <laughs> you know how people say, oh, hold your winners, let your, your winners run. I let my losers run. <laughs> right, and that's one of the things I wanted to talk about, right? Because we hear all the time when the market is down and things are looking bad, that's when you should buy. But I'm getting a very mixed response right now on if this is the time to get in, because it seems like, I think it's because we don't really know where the bottom is. So what is your take? Like, is this a buy-in time? Or? Yeah, I just bought, I, I bought some more, um, I, today I bought more extra gold resources to Ghana company that I, you know, I've been involved with for a long time. I, um, um, I went to see this morning another Ghana company, New Core Gold, and uh, I'm going to be buying more of that one. I've, I've been turning a little toward energy companies, but to be honest, except for one, uh, one uh, kind of disaster that is not in mining. Uh, I haven't been selling anything. And, uh, you know, if you want, I can mention that company, but uh, we'll, we'll, it'll come up in a bit. Right. So, so you mentioned the gold companies that you're looking at. That's good to hear about. I know you were telling your subscribers recently, though, that you're looking at polymetallic companies as well. So I wondered what the appeal is there, if you can talk a little bit. Okay, well, polymetallics, you know, like everybody's all of a sudden, magically, everybody's into carbon replacement deposits, you know, uh, uh, zinc, lead, silver. Now, they make sense in an environment where all commodities rise, but that's changed this summer and uh, into the autumn. Uh, you know, a couple of those kinds of companies, which I went to visit very recently, like two or three uh, weeks ago, uh, are in Alaska and the Yukon. Um, uh, you know, high gold mining and Western Alaska Minerals, both of which I own. And, um, you know, it makes sense if you're a true poly, if you have a true polymetallic deposit, whether it's a carbonate replacement deposit that has those elements or not, because you're going to eventually, <laughs> in this cycle, you're going to eventually get credits for a lot of things. You're not just going to be you know, selling to the smelter your, your gold and your silver or your slurry or your concentrate, but, but you're going to be getting credits, decent credits for the zinc, um, uh, uh, the lead, right? Some other middle, you know, I was just in Spain with uh, the tin company there, um, whose shares I also own, Strategic Metals, uh, strategic metals of Europe. Um, and, um, you know, besides tin, they have niobium and, um, and a few other things. Yes, it makes sense, but as you know, in, in, a, in a market like this, uh, the value separates, you know, the, the actual value of the, the project separates from the stock price or the bond price or, you know, whatever the, uh, the warrant price. So the companies you own during times like this, do you want to see them moving forward or would you rather see them wait on the sidelines a little bit, conserve their cash? No, this is something that just came up when we were talking with... Um, uh, Tara Christie at uh, Banyan Gold, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Tara and I, I was just once again at their project and the sister company, or I should say the parent company, although they're not related, but there's cross ownership, Victoria Gold, both again, I own them. And what happens is that um, she's not afraid 
to put out results in a bad market. In fact, she just did yesterday. And uh, whereas there are others who wait and sit, and they're trying to play the market. Um, I, you know, it's a tough call. I'm not a CEO. I'm not a, a VP of exploration. I, I personally prefer that when companies put out their, uh, you know, their data when they can. I had a, 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 a tiny bit of insight the other day because we were talking about biotech and pharmaceuticals, not just up on the stage, but uh, elsewhere. And, you know, I, uh, I own one uh, a biomedical uh, cancer immunotherapy company for nine years, and I'm about $500,000 in the hole, IMV in Halifax. I haven't given up. But I think what you're seeing happen now, not just in pharmaceuticals and everything, is is as risk capital disappears, that leads to many other forms of capital disappearing from markets. So let's say you're an investor who, t who wouldn't, you know, wouldn't flinch if you, were, if you put out results, mineral results or like clinical results for patients and they were extraordinary. Well, in, you know, in a good risk capital environment, the stocks would go up. People would say, oh, gee, they're saving people from, can uh, from cancer or they're going to help uh, for a cleaner world because they're, you know, they're mining uh, platinum and palladium and nickel and, and other battery metals. Um, but in this market, no, it's because they don't want, they don't care now if you're saving lives or if you're building uh, uh, energy, uh, you know, green energy materials for the future. What they care about now is cash flow, timeline to, if you're a drug company, timeline to actual commercialization of the drug, or if, you know, if you're a mining company, timeline of the project actually becoming a mine. And that's the way it is right now. I don't know how long it's going to last, but I'm a buyer, you know, at, at times like this, because like I said, I hold my losers. <laughs> well, yeah, and I think it does become tricky for those CEOs to make that decision on whether they wait or they go ahead, because you don't know how long it will last. And I think if I have a takeaway so far from this event, it's that people don't really, they don't really know when we're going to get out of this situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're very, you know, actually, I would have to say only maybe 20, 25% of companies that have lots of drill holes like the assays waiting for them or ready to be released. Only 20 to 25 percent of them are just putting them out regardless, right? Uh, they're, you know, they're, they're kind of like, uh, like Ben and Gold, a few others. They're confident of their shareholder base, whether, you know, whether they're quote unquote wasting their results on the market or not. I tend to believe that those types of companies are going to benefit more when I don't want to say return to normal, but when we see a return of risk capital, and nobody knows when that is. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure when we get back to normal. But do you have any other examples of companies that you're watching that you're seeing the news flow continue to come out and you're, you're encouraged by that? Well, I mean, it, it's selective. You know, you, uh, obviously, Ivanhoe Mines is our largest position at home. And I, I, you know, I write a lot about Ivanhoe Mines. It's been, it's been terrific. I mean, I've owned it since it was a private company in 2003. Ivanhoe Mines Africa, right? So the Congo and um, uh, the Republic of South Africa. And they're, you know, they're big enough, right, that they can, you know, they're going to put it out that news regardless. And I, I, I totally respect that when you got like a, you know, a six or eight billion dollar market cap. But there are smaller companies that are um, that are working on on that kind of approach. I mean, you know, I'm a very much a pro Africa kind of um, investor. That's why I own uh, uh, Nucor in Ghana. That's why I own Extra Gold, uh, 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 Jim Longshore's uh, company in Ghana. And you know, once again, case by case, I think you see them put out uh, mostly on a regular basis. Because, you know, as the holes come in, and as you know, there have been a lot of delays with, uh, uh, with assays and labs, and a lot of things need to be done for the core. Um, uh, you know, I, I think there are a few other examples, too, not just in Africa, of companies that, you know, will continue to feed the news pipe. And um, uh, uh, not just in Africa, but you have a couple in Alaska that actually continue... Uh, a couple in Quebec um, that I follow that continue. You know, one thing that's interesting right now is that everybody's waiting. Like there are quite a few companies that are working on 
to either a maiden resource estimate or an updated resource estimate, right? And there have been quite a few companies, Azimuth Exploration is one example in Quebec, uh, that, you know, have promised these by the end of the year. And, you know, when you promise uh, a resource update, whether it's a maiden resource or, or, or a resource update, you know, generally you're going to deliver. Same with a, 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 a PEA. Um, so, you know, we're all over the map right now. And once again, I, I just, I give a lot of respect to, you know, any organization, board of directors, CEO, VP of exploration, you name it, it's willing to put out the, uh, it's willing to put out the data regardless. Okay, okay. And I want to check in on your panel yesterday. So you had a good question, or at least I, I enjoyed it. You asked all your panelists, and I think you went around also asking other people, if they had one word to describe gold, what would it be? You chose destiny, if I'm remembering correctly. And I think people are having trouble, you yeah. know, thinking of gold as destiny right now. So could you tell me why, why that's what you chose? Well, sure. And I'm going to ask you what your word might be. Oh, gosh. And um, I'll tell you a couple of other select words. For me, I mean, it sounds a little hokey, right, destiny? But, you know, it's a, a little like uh, someone else's uh, word, I think, uh, uh, John McConnell from um, Victoria Gold had generational, right? The idea of generational wealth, although that's cheating because that's two words, but generational, uh, destiny, long term, right? Um, of course, you know, there are also the practical people. I mean, my friend Jim here from Extra Gold, his word sucks, you know, and there's your honesty. I think honesty is uh, almost always the best policy. Um, so destiny, it's my hokey way of saying, you know what, okay, if I'm wrong, well, I do own physical, and, uh, and I continue to accumulate the physical. And, you know, if I'm not around, well, there's probably someone in my family that's going to get it. <laughs> yeah. You know, what's your one word? Well, you know, I would probably go, this is maybe boring, I'd probably go with security or something like that. Was, that. that was one, security. Oh, shit, I just copied someone. Oh, no, you, no, you didn't. Insurance is another one, right? Uh, crazy. Is another one, um, logical, illogical, you know. I just ran into uh, uh, Jim Grant from Grant's Interest Rate Observer, T tremendous writer, and um, he and Mark Skousen were sharing a, a meal just now, and we, uh, you know, uh, we had a very short discussion, and I'm looking forward to his presentation, but um, Jim's the kind of guy that's extremely value-oriented. A lot like I am. I mean, I only go for things that are cheap. So now I'm, I'm pretty active. I don't go for momentum. I don't buy when stocks are high. And that's his approach. Uh, you know, he, if he had one word, I, I'll have to ask him because I didn't have time to spring the question on him. He'd probably say cheap. You know, gold. Cheap. There you go. I think that's what I've got for you today, unless you've got any final thoughts that you'd leave the audience with. No, I mean, you know, I, uh, I hope that we're doing a service to, uh, you know, the audience at the Calandra Report. And uh, once again, sob story is always uh, accepted if you uh, can't afford the uh, $179. And, um, you, know, uh, uh, you know, I'll tell you, it's always a pleasure to be with you. Oh, well, thank you so much. Always a pleasure to have you on Charlotte. Okay, and once again, I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and this is Tom Calandra with the Calandra Report.